Impossible. Just gonna die in the end. <laughs> uh oh, things are looking bad for old Curtis again. Oh, this is gonna be bad right here. Yeah, we, we I think we all we we all know we all know what's about to take place, and you guys are all far too familiar with the results of all this stuff having taken place. That's which is why I have to make up nicknames for all the characters and the things we watch because all the ability for memory was beaten out of me with metal folding chairs and sinks and hunks of lumber and, and whatever else I was bludgeoned with. But this specific sequence I want to take you guys through. You want to talk about great moves in wrestling? This is the kind of stuff that ranks up there for me. Now, it might not be what you expect. Not a high-flying big shot of some sort. Not, not a holy shit chant from the crowd, you know, uh, as a result of this. But this is... A real professional being a real professional. Now, the gentleman there who's um, having words with me right at the moment, his name is H.C. Loke. H.C. Loke. This was, I think, around the year 2000. Loke still works a heavy wrestling schedule to this day. He's one. Of, I, I mean, he's out and about everywhere. He's a traveling wrestler, not just, you know, limited here to the Northeast. He's all over the place. Phenomenal worker. He worked for ECW, Ring of Honor. He worked for just a lot of the big name companies. Just an excellent wrestling talent. He's given his whole life over to the sport. Now, uh, Loke and I had worked together on a bunch, bunch of occasions. We weren't best buds or anything. We were guys who worked together and we respected each other and, and worked in the business. And the reason I bring that up is because the action he takes that you'll see in here isn't because we were best friends and, you know, he went over and above because we were pals. It's because he's a real pro. And this is the kind of thing, and I know we have a lot of people here because you guys have expressed it to me that are interested in pro wrestling. Here's a lesson you can learn. Now, I'm, I'm going to take you through this step by step. Now, this, what we were setting up here was, um, I was, this was our World of Hurt Wrestling organization. I had become like, I was the old guy, I had become like a commissioner or, or something along those lines. Loke, who's right here, and then Danger, uh, his real name is Dave, good friend of mine, close friend of mine. Those were the two heels. Those were the bad guys. And they were out there letting me know that they were going to be in charge of things. So this is what happens. Well, can I or John? You can't tell me that. Who do you think you are? Dave sneaks in. Oh, and there goes Curtis. And now look, look over and uh, if you <laughs> look over right over in here, if you can see my cursor, that's Rob. He, he was our ring announcer at the time. Watch him. I'll, I'll wind this back. Watch him come over to the chair. He's just got mouth open right now. You guys have to understand that folding chair, that is basic. That's not gimmicked. It's not eased up on. That's the folding chair like you have around your kid's table at Thanksgiving. And it's one of the ones that the adults could have sat on too. You know, you, you could have big old Uncle Ernie, all 350 pounds of him, sat on that chair without it budging an inch. It hurt. And as you can see in the back, in the, the view there, the chair was pretty much annihilated. It was destroyed. That was set up because Dave and I, Danger, again, good friends. He'd been trying to encourage me because I would take these horrific beatings for the longest time to put my hands up when taking a chair shot. And he had said it to me this night. I remember that. He goes, well, you just put your hands up. It's not a tough guy thing. I wouldn't do it only because I'd always said, if somebody doesn't want to do chair shots and do that stupid crap, I completely understand that. I, I get that. But if I'm going to do it, I'm not going to deflect it. Just because I, I'm going to sell that I'm knocked out or that I'm annihilated by something, fans aren't stupid. I'm going to sell that I'm annihilated by something I blocked. If, if I want to do a violent match, it's going to be violent, which is for me. And again, just me personally, that means you suck it up. You get hit in the head and, and you deal with it. And, it. and it hurts. And you end up. Many years later, you know, having to write your name on your underwear and your address so you can find your way back home again and everything. Uh, but what I was starting to allude to is, I, I believe there's a point. Let me see if I can find this. And I'll take it step by step where Rob comes over to the chair. Let's see, where are we here? Yeah, he keeps, 
He kept looking at it like it was just funny to see. He's, he wanted to get over to it, but he didn't want to get too close in on the action. He was like, uh, he told me later, he's like, I couldn't believe what it did to that chair and that you weren't dead. But now I'm going to play this through. And here's why both those gentlemen in the ring, both um, Danger and Loke, are true professionals. But specifically Loke here. Now I'm going to put my headset on so I can hear what's being said as well. Now Dave's John with the fans doing, doing some really good heel work there. Now if you'll notice, right from when I got hit, I, I want to take this back a little bit. Because this goes towards me talking about why this is such a great, this is such a great wrestling move. Watch Loke from the moment I first get hit with that chair. Watch. Now he's working, he's sell that pal, it's a good line. But look at him looking at me. Now he's looking at me again. What? To the average viewer, has no idea what he's doing right at that moment, is Lokes assessing if I'm trying to assess if I'm really hurt or not. That's the mark of a true pro right from the beginning there. See that? He's not going to, even, even in selling it, he's not going to do anything to jar me too much. Dave, on the other hand, him and I have been down this road so many times. He's beaten me with so many heavy metal objects. And he's like, by now, Curtis, if, if I haven't killed you yet, that one didn't do it. But Lo, Loke and I had worked together a bunch of times, but had not had those type of violent interactions as often. Now, important. Now, Rob finally gets to look at the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, after this happens, Dave powders out, as you see. Loke is supposed to then just clothesline me to finish me off. We go on for quite some time here, and Loke isn't clotheslining me. As you see, he could do it any time now. You know, Dave's music is playing. He's leaving. He's, he's said his bit. He's gotten his heel heat. And so now I'm on the mat. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Because unlike me... Loke never forgets a spot. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on. It's like, I, I, I know he knows he's supposed to clothesline me before he, he powders out, but he's he's not doing it. And then I'm thinking, okay, is he screwing around with me? You know, just letting me think about it for a while. But it's like, it's just a clothesline. It's not that horrible a bump. You know, Typically, if you're going to screw around and make somebody wait for something, it's because the big shot is coming. But I already took the big shot. And again, because Dave and I, I, I told you guys, we were talking about that I got sidetracked. He was always wanting me to put my hands up, and I wouldn't. He's going, well, I'm still going to whale you with it. I said, swing it as hard as you want, you big freak. I don't give a shit. And so, of course, I instigated him into really whaling me with it, which that's the effect I wanted. You, you heard the crowd reaction to the chair shot. But now look, any time. Well, could hit me with that clothesline at any time. Now he's looking at me. The camera pans away, but he's looking at me, looking at me. Finally, when you come back, the camera will come back. He's finally got me up. And let's finish the old fart. And there goes Curtis. The reason he took so long, and he told me later, I didn't even realize it at the time. I asked him, I said, I said, look, what are we waiting for? He says, dude, he says, I don't know how that chair shot didn't break your neck. He said, I wasn't touching you till I was 100% certain that you didn't have a neck injury or some sort of serious upper body injury. That's why this is one of my favorite wrestling moves I've seen. That's a true professional doing what a true professional is supposed to do and take care of the guy that's in there with, with him. It didn't even occur to me at the time what was going on. And again, that had become typical fare for me. And plus, everybody as an individual, we know. I mean, I've had been doctor diagnosed. The reason I was able to survive that stuff is, A, I have a really big, thick neck. I mean, that's not by accident. I worked on it. But even more importantly, as I told you guys, after x-rays, the reason I'm not six foot tall and have a size eight hat on a bald head is because I have genetically extremely dense, uh, extreme bone density and that includes my skull as the emergency room doctor told me at one point it's basically like you have a football helmet under your skin Loke doesn't know all that all he knows is he stood right there and witnessed a really really stiff chair shot with a really really stiff chair and he was going to make goddamn sure that I wasn't seriously hurt before he touched me before he did anything that could exacerbate the injury 
Those of you who want to be wrestlers, those of you who just enjoy wrestling, this is how a real pro goes about his business. I wasn't even thinking about my own safety. He was. Now, we'll take you through the whole thing. It's, it's, you know, it's not that long a clip. I'll take you guys through it again. Now, here we are doing the John, John doing the John. Wilkes also letting me know that Dave's in position and he's ready as we're doing the John. There it goes. Now, now again, watch Loke. Immediately, he starts assessing everything. He looks over at Dave. Now, he's looking down. He's like, okay, is this... Creepy old bastard dead. Can, should, can I touch him? Should, should we break cave babe and bring in the, the ambulance? In, in other words, he's just trying to figure out what exactly went on before he does anything else. Dave's getting the good heel heat. Again, it's not that Dave wouldn't take care of me. Dave would take absolute care of me. We've just been down this road a bunch of times. Dave's very comfortable that that chair shot isn't the one that finally did serious damage, so he's going to lay the boots to me. And again, as he should, he felt comfortable with it. And now, Woke and I have not been down this same violent road as often as Dave and I had. Plus, Dave and I had talked about it prior to the match. So he's just making sure. Now, any time here, Dave's gotten his heel heat. As, the, as the, his outro music is playing, Woke could hit me with the clothesline any time he wanted. And I see he's still assessing me, still assessing me. Trying to figure out, now there he saw me laying my head against the ropes and stuff, and I'm looking up at him like, uh, are, are we, are we going to do this? <laughs> or what are we going to do here? What you don't see when we go away, when the camera pans away, and there it is in the finish. What you don't see as the camera pans away there is I looked up at Loke, and I, you know, I was like, okay. I gave him the eyes of what's going on, you know, like now I was starting to get concerned that something was up and finally he, he realized a hundred percent. And I, he, when he saw me laying my head on the ropes and stuff like that, he, he kind of figured that there was, you know, everything was going to be okay, but he knew a hundred percent that it was safe to go ahead. And so he hits me with the clothesline. I, I just can't tell you guys how impressed I am by somebody who takes that good a care of the person they're in with, because that's the cornerstone of this business. And I'll tell you, and I mean this sincerely, if I were still working, if I showed up at a show and Woke and I were going to work a match and he said, oh, okay, at this spot, I want you to jump off the top of the building. I'd say, oh, okay. And not just because I'm stupid, but because if Woke tells me to jump off the top of the building, it's because he's got a plan in mind to keep me safe. And I would implicitly trust that. So this is one of my favorite pro wrestling moves and uh, if this stuff gives you guys a little bit of insight into the business and how we go about taking care of each other in the best of all worlds it also draws and i'm not going to mention any names those of you who are wrestling fans will know who i'm talking about it draws a disparity between people who work the way loke does and people who even at the highest level are maybe a little more lackadaisical about the way they take care of the other person in there that's it for today. If you guys have any clips, uh, wrestling clips online that you've you ha seen on YouTube that you want me to look at, give my impressions of, or just give my personal breakdown of what went on or anything like that, hit me with it in the comment section. This might be something fun to pursue. But yeah, one, one of my favorite wrestling moves right here.